the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I'm your host, Mark Francis. The Daily Beast writes that friends of the royals have said the family would be hugely concerned if all this Harry and Meghan gossip turns out to be true. A friend of William's told the Daily Beast, William and Kate had plenty of reservations about the marriage in the first place, precisely because they feared Meghan wasn't right for Harry. But what's done is done, and now William, like everyone else in the family, just hopes it all works out. Harry returning to the UK and trying to find him a job would be a bloody nightmare. A friend of King Charles told the Daily Beast, The marriage has to work. That's not a case of Charles saying Harry has made his bed and has to lie in it. It's a case of a father wanting his son, who he loves very much, to be happy and to have his wife and children in his life. These stories are groundless anyway. I don't think anyone is seriously concerned that they are on the point of separation. A former friend of Harry's, who has not seen him since he moved to America, told the Daily Beast, I think the concept that they might not make it as a couple is there in the back of all of our minds because he has undergone such a huge change of lifestyle. The oversharing Harry is not someone we recognize and you just wonder if one day he will wake up and go, oh shit, what have I done? But the good thing is that as of now, all the reports I hear are that he seems perfectly happy with his new touchy-feely Californian millionaire lifestyle. Long may it last. Also from the Daily Beast, a friend of Queen Elizabeth said Harry and Meghan should have kept quiet. For the last years of her life, certainly from when her husband died, the Queen was in a lot of pain. In the final months, of course, it got very much worse. By the time of the Platinum Jubilee, she couldn't see very much, she couldn't hear very much, and she was easily confused. She barely moved from her apartment in Windsor Castle. Appearing on the balcony at the Jubilee required a titanic effort. That was the time for Harry and Meghan to bite their tongue. Instead, they produced this unending steam of incredibly hurtful films and interviews attacking her life's work. For Harry to announce he was writing a memoir when his grandmother was not just recently widowed, but actually dying herself, as he must have known she was, well, the cruelty of it takes the breath away. The idea that they are now going to take a vow of silence after all the damage they have done, even if it was true, which I very much doubt, will do nothing to assuage the anger and disgust some of her friends feel about what they did to the Queen in her final years. This week, Harry becomes the first senior member of the royal family to testify in court in well over a hundred years. Harry and more than 100 people are suing Mirror Group newspapers, accusing them of widespread unlawful activities between 1991 and 2011. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Hey, hey, it's Jordan Ross Myers, the man behind Twitter's notorious Lee Radswell and Don Gunvalson. I'm inviting you to join me every week for the Pretty Corrupt podcast. Along with my co-host, reality casting director Stacey Noel Connor, and disgraced entertainment TV producer Nate Safer, we deconstruct pop culture's past, present, and future and probe the dark crevices of Hollywood, taking you inside the scandals, feuds, rises, and falls of society's rich and infamous. Alongside interviews with our celebrity friends and special guest hosts, everything is fair game on the Pretty Corrupt Podcast. Every Tuesday on all streaming platforms and at storicmedia.com. Kinsey Schofield, host of the To Die For Daily podcast, told Fox News Digital the exploration of Harry's past is nowhere near done. There is nothing left to say is a factually inaccurate declaration. Prince Harry himself told The Telegraph that he had held back revelations in spare to protect his father and brother. This portion of his interview was instantly interpreted as a potential threat that Harry could continue to spill the tea. Part of the challenge here is that Netflix likely wants tea for their money, Sheffield adds. Netflix was quick to terminate Meghan Markle's project Pearl. Undeniably, the industry is primarily interested in Harry and Meghan's connection to the British royal family. Harry and Meghan risk irrelevance by distancing themselves from the royals. They will have to continue to remind us of their relationship, but it is getting harder and harder to do organically when the royals have so clearly distanced themselves, especially since Meghan is approaching more time away from the family than she was even on the royal scene. Would Harry and Meghan like to stay behind the scenes? Sounds nice, but realistically, the buyers expect more than that. Christopher Anderson, author of The King, said, There are issues and causes and awards and red carpets and ongoing lawsuits and grievances are plenty to keep them in the public eye. There's a huge difference between stepping back and vanishing. Harry and Meghan wouldn't disappear from the public eye even if they knew how. They are born headline grabbers. 
Royal expert Duncan Larkham agreed. It's quite hard to imagine them staying behind the cameras, but I think there is genuinely scope for them to carve out a life in America where they can carry out their philanthropic work. But you know where they can do their worthy causes and they can make good and draw people's attention to issues that are important without having to plunge any more knives into the backs of Harry's family. You know, that is surely possible. How lucrative it will be will probably depend on how successful any documentaries and so on, things that they're involved in prove to be. Stop the attacks, stop the swipes and the comments, because as we can see, it's absolutely destroying their reputation in Britain. And I don't know how well it's going down in America, but certainly from the popularity polls for the royals, every time they open their mouth, they seem to slip further and further to the bottom. Royal expert Shannon Felton Spence told Fox News Digital the couple should turn their attention elsewhere. Hypothetically, if I was working with a rich client who wanted to elevate themselves socially, I would get them on boards and host committees of influential charitable organizations in town. I would advise they give lots of donations and have cute lunches with the CEOs and board chairs and in exchange be recognized at the gala events with awards. That's the same playbook they are using with Megan. It's Socialite 101, but I think she wants more than that. They made $100 million from their tells, which is more seed money than they need to kick off their work with Archwell, she said. It's time to actually show the public some impact work. However, it may be the case that the brands they have deals with are demanding diversification of their content because it's gone totally stale. They have huge deals and in reality have produced very little. One podcast in three years does not $100 million make. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, YouTube, or your app of choice. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times.